Hello, everyone, and welcome to Local Chat. It's episode 28. It's the 15th of July. It's Bastille Day. No, it's not. That was the other day. But what it is, is gaming news. Joining me today, as always, Ian Gibson. Hi! I thought you were going to say something insulting. So, thank like the French suck? <laughs> No, against me. That's usually how it starts, is you just insult me <laughs> in some way that is very surprising to me and then force me to react in a moment in which I end up just saying 9-11 memes somehow, so... <laughs> please, please, God, no. Uh, also joining us for the first time, ladies and gentlemen, it's Elise from Save Data. Hey, uh, Welcome, Canada? and... I'd like to apologize at the beginning for what you are about to experience. <laughs> um, yes, she is from Save Data. I feel like I see you all the time on Around the Monitor. And then um, I was like, oh, I don't know much about Elise. And then you started playing Dragon Quest. And then I was like, oh, I can just talk to her about Dragon Quest now. Um, Let's get. Oh, I still haven't started 11. I, I'll get into it when we talk about what we've been playing, which is the first thing, at least since it's your first time on the show, I figured I would start with you for what you've been playing this week. So go ahead and kick us off. Uh, mostly I've been playing Mass Effect. Uh, downloaded the fucking Legendary Edition, made my way through Mass Effect 1 for the first time. I played Mass Effect 1, like the real, the actual version. Original version. That's what I should be saying. That's the word. <laughs> the actual uh, version. I did like the first mission like three years ago, and that game's jank as hell, especially in the original version. Mm -hmm. And I just like, I think it was right after I played Mass Effect Two, and I was like, I should, I should play one. Uh, and I was like, no, this is not, this is not it. But in the Legendary <laughs> Edition, they, they like brought the. Basically, the Mass Effect 2 and 3 system kind of over, like, combat system kind of over to the first one. Made it playable, mm -hmm. made it slightly less jank. It's still super jank. Um, yeah. But considering I'd played Mass Effect 2 about 10 times. Wow. Without ever playing the first one. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Figured it was something I should do. And then I just beat uh, 2 last night. Still, fucking amazing game. Are you are you gonna do Are you gonna do Mass Effect Three? Oh, I'm already in there. Okay, because I, I, I followed. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, I I followed in your footsteps somewhat. I played one and two for the first time with Legendary Edition, and I played about two three hours of three, and I stopped. And I'm not sure I'm gonna go back. I, I don't think it's necessarily. I can't tell if it's a judgment on three, mm. or if it's a judgment on the fact that I marathon one and two and i three is a bit too much mass effect yeah. on top even though i took like like a two-week break in between it's i don't know i know the first couple hours of mass effect 3 i was like oh you're just doing a lot of story cinematic mission type yeah. stuff yeah. and i was like i kind of like i you know i i used to make fun of bioware for having the, all those like options and quotes where they were like we're gonna have a story mode where you don't actually have to play the game you can just sit down and watch all the cutscenes." i was like that's stupid but that's all i want with mass effect 3. <laughs> you, they, don't you can do that the in the legendary edition there's an option that says make all the decisions for me <laughs> yes yeah but i don't even want to play it i just want to like sit down i may actually find a youtube cut that is literally just all the cutscenes of mass effect because i want to finish the story but i don't want to finish the fight you know <laughs> <laughs> keep fighting just to let me know what happens <laughs> just choose the ending yeah. for me i've, yeah, I've exactly. been also like changing my class in between all of them i'm carrying my save but like changing my class so in mass mm -hmm. Effect 3 i'm playing the vanguard which is like the charge in user shotgun fucking yeah be close which is kind of antithetical to how every single other class works <laughs> every single other class it's a cover shooter it's a yeah st stand behind throw out your powers every once in a while but then vanguard it's like rush in, hit them with your uh, stun and then your like powers and then hit them with your shotgun and melee. And I'm not sure that it's good <laughs> like as a class, but it's fun. Because <laughs> you're yeah. like, it's really hard to stay alive. You die in like two seconds. Yep. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but you're mixing it up between the games, you know, and that's good. Yeah. 
Cause I I always used to play Sentinel, which is like the half guns, half uh, half mm-hmm. force abilities. Yeah. Still, still probably. I, the best, but... Yeah, going into it, so I I had previously tried to play Mass Effect one and two, like an hour or two of each, and I knew, I remembered that I didn't like the powers and I didn't like the control scheme. So I just did, I think it's literally called Soldier, where I was just like, all I'm going to do is I just get all the guns that I can shoot, <laughs> and I put all my teammates to auto-deploy their powers. And honestly, not bad. Not bad doing that. I know I'm missing out on, like, self-deploying the powers, but not bad when you got all the guns, you know? Oh, no, so. I almost never tell the squad mates to do their powers. I just do them. Oh, Let yeah. Them yeah. <laughs> I, I, it's like, if I need something specific, if I need, like, yeah. that that robot to die, and this guy has a robot killing ability but yeah. I, I have no recollection of what i played in in one i played the class that because in one originally you couldn't use all the weapons right you had to mm-hmm. like choose. uh no in one you can use all the weapons you can bring all the weapons with you but you have uh at least in the legendary edition i don't know about the original mm-hmm. uh but you have like your specific skill trees that increase like your damage and precision and stuff with mm-hmm. the specific weapons that you're uh, possible. I, I think I want to say original one, which is one of the things they fixed. You couldn't use weapons that weren't for your class. So that's two and three, or that's how two at least works. Yeah. I might be wrong, yeah. but I remember being frustrated by it. Cause I could only use sniper rifles and pistols. Mm-hmm. And it was really Gosh. annoying. Um, and then two, I remember being a lot more fun and really enjoying that. I've never touched three. I've never wanted to touch three. Um, I, I've, yeah, I'll probably never touch three. But I'm glad yeah, everyone's I'm, enjoying everything. I think three, like, on the whole, is probably not as good as two. But it's a lot smoother, like the combat. I'm really enjoying using the Vanguard uh, mm-hmm. in this, this time. And like, there's some niggles, but like, it's it's a very smooth experience. And this has actually got me thinking about Mass Effect, like as a whole, because it's kind. When you think about it, it's a bad shooter or a mediocre shooter. Yeah. It's a mediocre like CRPG. Yeah. But somehow you combine those and you get one of my favorite games ever. Oh uh, yeah, I think for me at least, a lot of the world building is really well done and a majority of the characters are really good Mm -hmm. and so for me especially with one like i i prefer one over two because i think one just has like a tighter story going for it but for one and two i was okay with the mediocre combat and everything because all the quests were interesting almost all the locations were interesting the background the lore the story and that's why i literally just looked up mass effect 3 all cutscenes. and there's a nine and a half hour movie on youtube (laughs) folks i may watch it I may watch nine it. Nine and a half it's, hours? That's that better than the like right. that's better than the twenty to twenty-five hours I would have to play of Mass Effect <laughs> 3, so I may do it. Yeah, that's true. But like when you compare like the the conversations and like the quests to something like Bioware's earlier stuff, uh mm-hmm. the, the the Baldur's Gate games, especially fucking Knights of the Old Republic, yeah. which is amazing. And Obsidian did KOTOR too, but also fantastic. Uh-huh. And you compare it even to like Fallout New Vegas, and you're like, wow, those are just better. Those are just better, like yeah. dialogue, better cutscenes, better everything. But somehow I don't love those as much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Something special about Mass Effect. There's something special. I think it's. I think also part of it is also how badly they just messed it up over time. So it's not like. <laughs> It's like Star it's Wars. Like, it's like, yeah, it's it's like Star Wars. You know, like I feel like people who are fans of the prequels and fans of the originals have become such even more somewhat belligerent but understandable diehard fans of those because of how much Disney has messed it up. They're like, no, I like Star Wars, the real Star <laughs> Wars, you know? And it's the same with Mass Effect. It's like, no, I like Mass Effect 2, not 3, not Andromeda, not any of that crap. <laughs> I like I don't like Anthem. I like Mass Effect too, you know. So that's the peak makes it easier to love and remember. Maybe I don't know. Can't wait for our Andromeda playthrough. <laughs> oh boy, the subpixel Andromeda. Um, great. Uh, at least what else have you been playing? Uh, I just finished up Skyrim as well. 
don't have a lot to say on that because uh, it's been, it's been like a week. But I've played also that game ten times, uh, mm-hmm. always with fuckload of mods, except for the first like two when I was playing it on Xbox 360. Uh, mods make magic in that game actually useful, and it's so much more fun to play magic when it's actually useful than to like the the melee combat in that game awful terrible no good. Yeah. <laughs> very bad yeah. what is what is the mo- like how does it make the magic systems better so there were a couple things one of them is uh i had a mod that puts magic recovery or magic code recovery on like a cooldown so it's like it recovers Ooh. at like 60 percent for for seven seconds and then it basically recovers all in the next second which means nice. that especially early game when you're in the base game, you throw out your flames for two seconds, and then you need to wait. You need to run around avoiding attacks for the next 30. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that makes that a lot better. And mm. then it also just, uh, there was Ordinator, which completely changes up the skills and gives you like a lot of uh, like things that make elemental attacks uh, give them special skills. So mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. the lightning can have people hang in the air and do damage over time while they're oh. hanging in the air. And uh, and then a bunch of ones that just add fucking spells. Nice. <laughs> because the yeah. spells in the base game are not interesting. Is, yep. is there a mod that reminds me to use potions and items because I don't <laughs> need them at the end of the game? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, you never think about it because they're all, like, less than one pound. I but know. They fucking stack yeah, up. Know. And it's like, oh. I was like, oh, I'm, I'm always like at cap. I can't pick anything up. And then I decided to just give to like my companion all of my potions. <laughs> it's like, oh, wow, I just lost 200 weight. <laughs> I, I restarted Oblivion a couple months ago. And I, I, was doing this, I was doing the same thing. I was like, I just had so many potions. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to use them. But then also I have like the scrolls and I never like understand if the scroll is going to give me the power or I only get to use it once. You get or... to use it once. Yeah. And then it's like, it's just, but also that game is still amazing. Oh, um, it's so good. Even just base running it on an Xbox Series X still looks really good even if the textures aren't quite there anymore. As long but as you're like, not looking at anyone's face. <laughs> yeah. And like the day night cycles and people unlike cyberpunk actually have routines and stop mm-hmm. and talk to you and do all sorts of stuff. Like it's not perfect, but it's, oh, it's so good. I love oblivion so much. Um, I played oblivion so much. Like ugh, that came out, what? 2007, 2006. I, knew it, I think it was right. 06. Yeah. I was probably about seven or eight years old when I was playing that like over and over again. Yeah, I I distinctly remember I had like a wooden chair with a CRT, my 360 in my room, and I remember just waiting for those so long loading screens <laughs> and that little red bar filling up and like trying to make out what the picture was because the loading <laughs> screens are like the sketched picture, but then the oh, screenshots yeah. on the border. And oh, it's not as... I don't like the Skyrim ones, even though you can mess around with them. Um, and I always really like the Morrowind ones because those were like a bestiary book, like someone sketched. And those were really cool. Morrowind is a fantastic game. Um, I tried playing Morrowind like a year ago or two years ago. And it's just, it's, that game's old. Yes. Can you feel it? You have to, I want someone to update it where you have quest markers. Because mm. that you need to read the log to know where to go and everything. But when I played that game, I literally robbed everyone and just looted <laughs> and killed people to the point where I would kill people and be like, hey, you you can't beat the game if you kill this person. And so it's I like would the kill threat them. Of prophecy yeah. would be... And it says, yeah, the threat of pro- prophecy fades away or something. And I was like, sweet. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, uh,. I remember happening upon the House of Earthly Delights uh, that was some sort of strip club uh, in Morrowind as a strip club in a RPG in 2001 could be. Um, Mm -hmm. And I remember telling my friends, oh, the House of Earthly Delights, it's not a a bakery. Because I thought it was like desserts or something. Um, Yeah, I don't know. I I was like 
whatever age I was when I played that game. Um, it was Bad also age. the first Xbox game I ever bought. Uh, and I didn't, I took it out of the bag when we left GameStop and my mom yelled at me because it looked like I stole it. He's like, no, you keep it in the bag when you leave a store. And I was like, oh, what about these other games I stole? Um, <laughs> but uh, sorry, I'm, I, I, I'm, I want to go play Morrowind now. Um, no, I, I, I played Oblivion so much like as a kid and then Skyrim was announced and the PC we had uh, couldn't run it. So oh, it's no. like, so I, pull, I had like this tin, uh, it was like a crayon tin or something, or colored uh -huh. pencils, uh, that I'd empty it out and was just storing all the money that like my parents gave me that I didn't use. <laughs> and I had like $300 in there. And nice. I went to the game store, the, the used game store uh, in town, and I bought an Xbox 360 on November 11th, 2011. Wow. The day Skyrim came out. Wow. My it's my like mom man. still reminds me because she gets she does those like time hop things through Facebook or whatever, and she'll mm -hmm. always message me the picture of her in her Prius at the mall while I was inside getting Skyrim at midnight, and she'll write, "I'm the best mom, aren't I?" And I'd be like, "Yeah." <laughs> and I went home that night and I was underage, so I drank sparkling apple cider while playing <laughs> Skyrim at like one in the morning, <laughs> and like I that probably. Don't probably did bleak falls or something and then just went to bed because I, I i i just remembered i have a crazy skyrim launch story too which is i was i was a senior in college when it came out and i went to college in beirut so all i had with me was my like alienware used to put out this 11 inch netbook which would run games but not really <laughs> and the other thing was you couldn't really leak you could legally buy games in in lebanon but it was like 90 dollars for like a ps4 version so mm. i couldn't really buy it i also couldn't download it because my internet was too crap but i had this gang of friends and all of us played games and we would literally this would happen with any movie or tv series there was literally just hard drives external hard drives that would be passed around and you would get it for a couple days and you would just take as much stuff you know like all the seasons of house you know <laughs> uh, the american psycho dvd rip it, you would just grab off of it and one of them had good internet. And so like when Fallout New Vegas came out and then later when Skyrim came out, they got it. And I remember I couldn't play it until 30 days after it came out, but I booted it up on my computer and I was playing it and it was like running at like 20 FPS, but I was still playing it and enjoying it. And I was sitting in my apartment with my, that I share with my roommates and I had headphones on and I like, I, it was like a Friday night. I came home from like class and I was just like, it's Skyrim time! And so I just, like, got a beer and I put on headphones and I fucking cranked it on the laptop and I'm just like, woo! And then I was like, Ugh! And I turned around and my roommate, who uh, I turned out later was just, like, this con artist sleaze man, was standing there with these two American girls that he picked up at the bar and had brought them home to try to get them into a threesome. And I was just like, Hi! <laughs> And he was like, I wanted to show them my the apartment. I'm just like, hi, I'm Ian. Just trying to be like, get out of here. You don't want to be here, ladies. <laughs> and it was terrifying. And then the funny thing was, like two hours later, I was out bar hopping with a friend and I ran into him and I was like, hey, you got out of there alive. And I actually like, became good friends with them over the next couple of months. But it was just like. Hey, ladies, let's go to my apartment. Watch my creepy roommate play Skyrim at full volume. <laughs> really turns just, you on. <laughs> just creepy, creepy. Jeez. Anyways. Um, man, I don't know why I spend the time doing stupid streams like we do. We should just play Fallout New Vegas and Oblivion and Skyrim. And, uh, yeah, it'd be, it'd be boring. They're good games. No, it'd be boring, but we would have fun. <laughs> Screw you the know, audience. Honestly, just, Okay, I'm gonna peek behind the curtain. I hate. I watched a ninja stream once for two minutes, and he couldn't even like center his webcam properly. And he was just sitting there like in a menu, and he still had like a hundred thousand viewers. And it's like, get out of here! You don't deserve that view count. We put we and saved it. We put so much more effort into our streams, and we're not just going. Oh, let's play some more Fortnite, guys. Look at these costumes. Look at these costumes, guys. Look at them. Just yeah, but like, what if we wore yoga pants and pretended to lick people's ears? Mm. Ugh, 
I'm yeah. sorry, I'm all hyped up. I thought I was sleepy, but I'm not anymore. No, you're not. While you're hyped up, why don't you tell us about what you've been playing, Mr. Gibson? Oh, not, I've been playing Will. Are you surprised I to hear that I've been playing a little bit of Bloodborne? I could not believe it when you posted the <sighs> okay. screenshot. At least I, I need to bring you up to speed. So I, yeah. I'm not a, I don't want to say I'm not a big fan of the Soulsborne games. I've just always been rather intimidated about them. We did a series about a year, year and a half ago called Time to Die, where I literally played the first hour of each Soulsborne game, and we counted how many times I died in the first hour. Oh, no. And it was about 15. It was about 15 per game. <laughs> yeah. But out of those, Bloodborne was the one that I actually enjoyed the most, but I was running it on a base PS4, and it's, it's chunky. It's chunky on, on a PS4. Um, but long story short, I've been looking for some games to play that I don't have to spend any money on. And I forgot <laughs> that Bloodborne is part of the PlayStation collection. It's like what the one you get for the for getting a PS5, right? Yeah, yeah. Whatever yeah. that I think it's I think it's the PlayStation collection. I think it is. I think I think it's the PlayStation yeah, Plus collection. Time. Yeah, that's yeah. It's anyways, it's in that. So I downloaded it. And I played it, and um, Will, you're not going to believe this, but I no. played it for like three or four hours. Ah, oh. I died like twice. I'm actually kind of good at it, and Damn. good as in compared to what I previously was. Um, but I'm sorry to say I will not be playing that game anymore. Oh, and here's here's why. The game's fantastic, but what happened was Saturday I got up and I played it. And I was like, I'll just play until I die. And I ended up playing for like two hours and like exploring like almost all of y old Yarnum. And I was like killing mini bosses left and right and unlocking all this stuff. And I just wasn't dying. But the entire time I was so tense. It's like 9 a.m. on a Saturday. I'm sitting there with my cup of coffee and I can't calm down, folks, because it's too gosh darn spooky and intense for me. And at the end of it, I didn't even die. I was just like, I got to do other things. So I like put the controller down and I was like, I don't want to play the game anymore. It's it's kind of like, I don't know. Do you guys do you guys ever get that like sense of like where you're just like all wound up while you're playing a game, whether it be Bloodborne or something mm -hmm. else? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, yep. and I just like, it's the same thing that happens with PUBG. PUBG is a fantastic game and I liked playing it, but I've probably only put about five or six hours into that game total because it's literally one match and I'm good for three or four days because it winds me up too tight and I'm just like, and then I come out of it and I'm like, I don't understand how people play PUBG or Bloodborne for like hours and hours and hours. It's too intense for me. I can't handle it. Am I crazy? Uh, Maybe. I, I see where you come from. Uh, I've been playing a lot of Sea of Thieves and the anytime I get any amount of treasure on my ship, it's like, I got to get back to the outpost and sell everything. Like, what if yeah. someone... And no one has ever done anything. And yesterday when I... Or two days ago when I played with Karen... We had one piece of treasure and some guy attacked us and was like, give me oh. that treasure. Um, but yeah, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's like Bloodborne is a fantastic game. And, and I'll say this. I've been playing it on the PS5 and it doesn't run at 60 frames per second, but it feels like it is a locked 30, which is definitely an improvement over the original. And as somebody who doesn't know pretty much anything about the Soulsborne games, but has played at least an hour of all of them, except for Sekiro, it's, it's so much quicker being able to get your health back with subsequent hits and being able to roll and actually have that be a viable method is, is it's really good. It's really good. It's just, uh, yeah. it's too intense for me to play. So I really appreciate it. Great game, but subjectively I can't handle it. Can't handle it. You know, sorry. I'm like a huge Soulsborne fan of oh, souls fan. I've never played bloodborne. It's really because, good. Well, because I don't have a PS4. <laughs> oh, well, don't don't play it on PS4. Wait for the PS5, because <laughs> yeah. because I remember on the so it would you would be in the middle of a fight, and it would start chunking down to 20 FPS, and you would just be like, oh, okay. oh no, that's yeah. bad. I'm yeah. just hoping one day it gets released on PC. Yeah, that's, that's all I want. I've heard rumors uh, that it might be, but yeah, I'm hoping they keep. It's kind of like the whole um, Red Dead Redemption one mm -hmm. where people were like it's coming to pc it's finally coming and it's still <laughs> not on this. yeah actually i think you can't i i can't it's either through xcloud or through playstation now that you can now play it on yeah. pc mm -hmm. i but... feel like they were so adamant too 
uh, Rockstar was saying they weren't porting it because it was the the systems were too complicated to do it, and people were just like they're tricking us. They're actually doing yeah. it, and they're like, they're no, no, we're, no, how else can we explain it? Yeah, and then GTA Five they did eventually port. It was like eighteen months later, and yeah. that 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 threw up the, the everybody going. Oh, now they're gonna do it for Red Dead, anyways. Um, I've been playing two other games, kind of some quick hits. One of them is Immortals Phoenix Rising. I've been playing this. I've been playing the PlayStation 5 copy of this. Wow. And folks, you won't believe how I got this. I went to the local public library. <gasps> and I, yeah. I keep forgetting this. They, like, it's, it's, how I, it's how I played Bioshock when it came out on the 360. Was It was at the library. And now I'm, like, I'm like trying to like tighten up my purse strings because I, I got to buy a house in like less than two weeks now. I got to put down all that money and start paying a mortgage. So I'm like... I'm not spending any money on games. I got Game Pass. I got PlayStation now. I got plenty of options. And then I was like, I'll go to the library, you idiot. Because I haven't been to the library in like seven or eight years. And it's not because I'm illiterate or because I don't read. It's because I've been buying way too many books for the last 10 years. So, and then I was like, oh, but they have magazines and video games. So anyways, I went. They had a PS5 copy of Immortals Phoenix Rising. Kind of interesting, honestly. So what, what, do, what do you guys remember? Or, or have either of you played this game? All I know is I've watched the uh, Super Bunny Hop video that he released like a week or two ago. Uh, mm -hmm. It's like if Ubisoft tried to do a a uh, Breath of the Wild. Yeah, that, that's that's definitely how it feels. And you know, it's interesting. Uh, Will I want to play a, a little back and forth here because you've recently played Breath of the Wild. Yes. And so Immortals Phoenix Rising is very similar, but it's also doing some things differently. So, for example, like, how do you think they're doing story? Uh, I, I, so I know how they do the story in Phoenix Rising. So I, I'm sorry. I, but you didn't let well, me I say mean, my background with the game, and I'm upset. I know you didn't play it because you never talked about it on the local <clears throat> chat. So, Okay. All right. Uh, but I did drunkenly buy it. Uh, that and Assassin's Creed Valhalla for $60, I think, which isn't that mm -hmm. bad of a deal. So no. up yours. Uh, I do know the story is it's it's Zeus narrating it, isn't it? Like recounting it's a tale, talking to Zeus. annoying people. It's actually very confusing because basically like Typhon escapes. And turns everybody to stone. So then Zeus like goes to Prometheus and is like, I need your help. How are we going to defeat them? And Prometheus is like, well, let me tell you the story of Phoenix, which is like a frame story. But then at the same time, Phoenix is also fighting them. So they're kind of like narrating it as it's happening. It's, it's kind of a funny thing. But, but I think the main thing is like Breath of the Wild is telling its story through like interactions with NPCs and, and like almost like... Um, world building you know like you come across that that hyrule field in front of the castle and there's all those dead guardians and some mm -hmm. of them are still like half damaged and alive and it's like oh there was a battle here but nobody's explicitly saying that and um phoenix i'm uh, sorry immortals phoenix rising oh, a stupid name i can't got some monsters <laughs> yeah it, it's it's like it's not bad the way they're telling the story, but it's very stereotypical. It's just like, here's a cutscene. Okay, now do this mission. And then when you start the mission, there's a cutscene. At the end of the story, at the end of the mission, there's a cutscene. You know, it's so it's very typical. Um, another thing I'll say is how do you, is the way they do their unlocks? Like if you think about mm -hmm. in Breath of the Wild, like to get more hearts, you find heart pieces, right? That's how it works in Breath of yeah, the Wild. Yeah, you like trade normal. the orbs for heart pieces. Yeah, or, or dungeons. Do you, have to, do you have to go to somebody to do that, or it yeah, just you have to go pray to the at the Temple altar. of Time? Oh, that's yeah, right. Yeah. That's well, right. the altars are everywhere. There's one at Temple oh, of Time, right. but yes. yeah, 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 yeah. So it's not it's not terribly different, but that at least feels a little bit more in world, and it feels more immersive. Whereas, like in Phoenix, it's literally like, hey, this is the Hall of the Gods, and you go to this like Parthenon looking open air place. And there's just like eight like pseudo crafting stations around it. And it's like, you go here to trade in Zeus lightning for strength. You go here to trade in coins for upgrades. <laughs> you go here to make your potions. And it's like, I really appreciate that they have all these options in here. 
but it's it's like in my ongoing war against AAA games, it's just like, why did you feel, I understand you have this team and you're like, let's put polish on top of all of that. And that means 12 skill trees and we have unique animations. So when you, when you go to the station, you trade in Zeus's lightning, you have like this weird, like a weightlifting set and you do a little animation. Isn't that cute? And it's like, yeah, it's cute, but it's taking me out of the game. You're showing me a stupid little cutscene at a single location. You know, yeah. versus something in Breath of the Wild where it's like, I found this place, and if I put this thing there, then it gets me this, you know. So it's it, it's still fun. The combat's not great, but the world's pretty good. And it definitely gives me enough of those Breath of the Wild vibes to, like, satisfy my, my desire for Breath of the Wild 2. But it's just interesting to see how a AAA studio and a AAA publisher like Ubisoft is just continuously slathering that same type of, like, triple a sameness on top of what felt like something very unique and can you can you climb strange. anything yeah you can climb everything okay and you have a stamina meter but um it doesn't feel quite as unique it doesn't feel like it's as rewarding for you to kind of climb all over the place and find these weird little things there's some powers but like for example the lifting power they, they don't really have the breath of the wild physics system but you have a lifting thing which lets you pick things up and hold it above you and then throw it but there's nothing like in Breath of the Wild where it's like, oh, I'll use that to stack or I'll do that plus do the time freeze to then like shoot it across the world or yeah. I'll use fire to light things on fire, the whole grassland. It's like, no, it's just a very rudimentary. This is how you pick up and move objects because you're going to need that for a puzzle. Things you know? do one thing. There's no like systems behind it. or like systems Exactly. Interacting. Yeah, that's that's the perfect way to put it. And it's for a free game I got at the library and I have three weeks rental. Great. I probably put Three like five, weeks. six hours. That's dope. It. Yeah, and 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 you know, honestly, you pay basically thirty bucks for it. I would I would pay up to forty for it if you think you would enjoy it. There's a lot of yeah. game there, and it's not awful, but it's also, I just just feels I, like I, insulting. Yeah, a little bit, and 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 at least I've I've talked about this previously, and I'm still like slowly trying to formulate this, but I feel like <laughs> on patrol roommates <laughs> but i feel like <laughs> but i feel like triple a like i played watchdogs legion and i feel like oh god that game has such a core like a fantastic core premise of there is no single protagonist you are recruiting people they're each like procedurally generated and they have their own unique like positives and negatives and then they just ruin that game by going triple a and say well we need to have unique city we need to have 20 different types of things going on we need to have a cutscene. we need to have like over the top characters we need to have like 40 skill trees and it's just like i would have loved that that game was just that single gimmick but it let it was just a sandbox for you to do whatever you wanted into it and so i feel like this is just another example of triple a games coming in and trying to like commodify and like polish and embiggen a great gaming idea, but in the process they smother it. It, uh, it feels like because I do like those AAA games. I love uh, Assassin's mm -hmm. Creed Origins. I probably really like uh, Phoenix Rising. Um, Gods yeah. and monsters. But but when you see something so cool, and then they just completely meld it into the one formula. Like I like yeah. those games. I like those games once a year yeah exactly whereas i yeah. would probably play all of them if they weren't or at least a lot of them i would play immortals phoenix rising and then i would play rock dogs legion if it wasn't just the exact same game over and over again yeah yeah and i think it's it's almost paradoxical where or i i mean more ironic in a way is that it's more insulting that they are trying to use a new gimmick and then kill it in the process versus just being 100 percent that same formula you know it's like i i want the 100 percent of the same formula rather than 95 percent of the same formula with sh with i don't want to say shoehorned in but wasted five percent fantastic potential that <laughs> pisses me off more um so anyways um ubisoft i'll send you my resume you know <laughs> let me be your creative director because i can do a lot better than you're doing right now uh anyways last game i played i played about an hour of rage 2 it's on game pass i don't know man the shooting feels good they've got some like really cool story stuff going on and a cool like upgrade system but that's a big world that is empty and it does the thing where you're like driving down the road 
and then you see an empty town and there's just like a it's like an empty town and then there's just like this weird little 20 foot tower with an icon on it and then you stop oh. and the lady's like oh that's an enemy tower you should destroy it and you're just like okay so then you you hop out of your vehicle <laughs> And you go destroy the tower and then you walk back to your vehicle and all of a sudden there's just like guys spawn next to your vehicle that were not there before. And you just know the game system was just like, he's on foot, spawn some enemies, let's get some dynamic stuff going. But it's like the same generic like five enemy crowd I've already seen a dozen times in the hour that I've played this game. And so it's just this empty world that they have failed to populate in any sort of enticing way, which is a shame because it, it, it looks great and it and the shooting feels good. But man. What a waste of open world. I'm have done. you played have you played Mad Max? Like the Mad Max? I have. I, I couldn't really get into the loop or the controls that much. And I'm pretty sure the Mad Max developers have helped out with Rage 2. Oh, I really? Because what I was thinking, like when I look at Rage 2, I think I should just play Mad Max instead. Because I love that yeah. game. I think it's like the perfect of that formula, of that like Ubisoft formula, where it's just fill out the checklist, go to places, do a task, you know. I love, yeah, I should it's try perfect it. for that. Exactly. It's always like $5 yeah. on sales, and I think yeah. about getting it, but I never do it. Feels good to so it, Yeah. So it was the same. It was Avalanche that, that did Mad Max, but they also collaborated on Rage 2. It's the Just yeah. Cause team. I think there's a couple different Just Cause teams. Yeah. Just cause, there. You know? I think it was I think it was the like Arkham team that did uh Oh. Yeah, I could see that. But anyways, yeah, so it, I I enjoyed it. Is it is it I was worth an effort, it was worth a try for Game Pass. Um I'm just I, I'm just kind of like a kind of like a nomad right now, just going through cheap and free games I've got access to. <laughs> and I'm just hoping for one to stick. I don't I don't know. Maybe I'll just go back to yeah. playing Roblox. I don't know. <sighs> do it you won't well um, well i took up all your time so we can't talk about your stupid games you've been playing oh i know you did take up all my time um i started assassin's creed valhalla i enjoyed i probably played an hour and a half uh it's been fun i just have not gone back to it after i played that initial bit um <clears throat> i played a bunch of factorio uh because factorio is good and instead of doing work, I can just play Factorio. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, that's been going well. I'm uh, up to a, a nuclear, nucle nuclear stuff, nuclear stuff, nuclear. Uh, which I've never done before. And I set up like a whole railway and everything. So I'm working on that. I was trying to figure out uh, stoplights and stuff for the railway mm -hmm. so I could keep one track and not have to build a separate track. But... It's, uh, it's so much work. Uh, that if you like figuring out stoplights for railways, uh, oh, no. you should play Open TTD. I literally, the icon oh. is on my desktop. I it's it's been. I know a lot of people that like played a lot of the modders for uh, Open TTD. Some of them actually became the devs of Factorio, so it's like oh, direct really? inspiration there. Yeah, I am. Um... I uh, I like Open TDD T T T D E T D right yeah um, Transport Tycoon Deluxe yeah um I I feel like every time I play any Chris Sawyer game I just want to go play Roller Coaster Tycoon uh it's a problem um but I never so I bought this on GOG I haven't touched it yet I didn't know he made another specifically train game called Locomotion yeah that is pretty good so i have that downloaded i need to go try that to see i want to see how different it is um but yeah all, all those games man now i want to play roller coaster tycoon 2 um i'm not going to uh, i've also been playing Real a lot quick, of though, Sia. what i just want to say factorio the great thing about nuclear is like the way they like the rest of the game right they just kind of do like oh, you, you smelt steel into, like, steel plate, and then you use steel plate to make gears. You know, it's... it's. I don't want to say it's not complicated, but it's pretty, like, one-to-one. -one. Like, you're making an ingredient to make another ingredient to make another ingredient. Nuclear does this crazy thing where they're, like, you know, you have, let's say, like, uranium-230 that you mine, 
and then you put it through a centrifuge and there's like a 1% chance that it becomes uranium 235. So you basically oh. have like, you have to figure out this whole system where like you have to get like a rotating conveyor belt in a way, just so it like, it, it grabs it, it tries it, it doesn't work. It puts it back on the conveyor belt. It loops back around, it tries it again. And it's oh, just so, so cool. What? yeah, it's so different from the normal factory where it's just like feed it, it'll make it go on. And, and it, it's so cool because it's it's not even super late game. It's probably like two thirds of the way through the game, but your brain has to flip a bit where you're just like, oh, I can't just, everything up to this is just make the ingredients, feed the ingredients. But now it's yeah. like, no, I need to have some sort of like replicating rotational system so that I can, uh, I can constantly try. But when I get it, I need to detect that I've got it and pull it out. Otherwise it's going to get stuck in the loop. And it's, it's such a cool moment when that, when you realize that's how it works. Yeah, I, I gotta I gotta jump back in there. Um, sea Thieves, I talked about plenty. Been playing a ton of that. Uh, going through the Pirates of the Caribbean Tall Tales, they're actually really good. Um, I played. <laughs> I say that I we played the third one, which what was good, but there was a part that was just awfully designed. So you like sail mm -hmm. into this bayou swamp, and we all got off the boat, and I'm like looking, and I'm like, I think we have to keep sailing. And everyone's like, no, I don't think so. I was like, yeah, no, I think we do. So we get back on the boat, like half sails, and we sail through this entire bayou that's tiny and then get to the story stuff and everything. So you're supposed to sail through it. And I'm like, they need to redesign this. Like, they need to put a marker oh, here yeah. that pulls you in so you know to go keep sailing. You don't get off the boat. Because it looks like you get off the boat. And literally the patch notes came out. And I was reading them and it said third tall tale adjusted added straight way at the beginning to entice players to sail through the entire route and like all this thing to entice sailing. And I was like, I told you, I told you. And I was so happy. I was like, felt so validated. Oh, I was like, I knew you had to sail through this. Um, and uh, I, I was just happy they fixed it so fast because uh, it was a really good tall tale, but it was just that one section that was so stupidly laid out um so that was fun uh and then um i have a dilemma i won't get too far into it because we do have to get to the news but i have put my entire mental brain energy into i've started the wheel of time books i mentioned this last week and i've been reading through them and i'm trying to keep my brain focused on like that world and like remembering things and i'm reading that book so every time I go to play a new game, I'm trying not to pick an RPG or something because I don't, not that I'm going to, but I don't want to get those worlds mixed up and then get all confused and everything. So I think I'm going to just mainline a bunch of FPS, like level-based linear games Time going Fall forward. Two. Yeah, Timefall 2. <laughs> I was thinking of replaying through all the Bioshocks because they're on Game Pass. I redownloaded mm -hmm. MGS5 because it's so good. Um Nick. But yeah, that's I have a bunch of RPGs on my list, and uh, I kind of threw them out because I was like, I'm gonna devote my my big brain let me, time. Let me, no, no, no. Let me uh, look. I used to be when I was in high school, et cetera. I was like, I'm only gonna read one book at a time. And then I got to college, and I was an English lit major, so I had to read like multiple books at the same time. And I was like, oh, I can handle this. And then, like, at some point I was like, oh, I could probably watch multiple TV series at the same time, like binge them interwoven in a way. Yeah. You can handle it. If you want to yeah. play an RPG, just play an RPG. No, that's, what I, I, that's what I would say. So I can yeah. handle that, too. My problem is I didn't want to play a fantasy set RPG while reading a fantasy series. Like, I was starting up Dragon Age again to try to get through that. And I was like, no. So I might start up like Yakuza, like a dragon. Cause that's completely different than I won't confuse that with the fantasy series. I yeah. Mean, you know what I mean? But at the same time, it could be interesting to have them side by side. Cause that allows for more, like a more direct comparison. Like yeah. one will enlighten the other. I just don't want to be reading the book and be like, Oh, where's, where's blah, 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 the big bad guy. And then like, Oh no, that's from <laughs> dragon. You know, I just, I, mean, yeah. I know you're not, you're not stupid. That won't happen. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm very stupid um folks speaking of stupid time for the news and that means the one and only news theme has to be played here we go here's the news we're talking about news it's gaming news what's up news 
what is up news ian just walked away so <laughs> be happy for that um it's sorry it's news time uh, it is so hot in this room i this is the only podcast or only stream we do that i do not turn the fan and air conditioning on for god i am sweating like a hog on sunday um starting off nickelodeon all-star brawl it was ian's making Ooh, noises <laughs> and then realized he was muted um it well, okay i so i missed the beginning of this was this leaked on gamefly yes I, okay i think yeah i think it was leaked like 15 or maybe 30 minutes before and then the, and then the announcement came out which i gamefly still around gamefly is still around that's crazy yeah it's only in the U.S., I think, so I can't use it. Yeah, I, that I there's still not a, every now and then, I, I think I stopped using them in like 2016. By using them, I would do like a three month discount, but their shipping times are so slow that it just wasn't worth it. It was like a six day turnaround. Oh, geez. from you like shipping a game out to getting the next game. But I will say, GameFly every now and then has used game sales, which is you can get some cheap Nintendo Switch. Stuff I, I was that. distinctly remembered them having a going at a business sale i thought wario 64 posted but maybe i'm wrong uh, no regardless. that was red box because red box red was box. renting, they were renting yes, video games for a while that's what stopped. it was now yeah, okay yes um yeah. anyways they announced nickelodeon all-star brawl for the nintendo switch and other platforms it seems to be a super smash brothers style brawling game you know what i will check this out for sure yeah. i think it looks cool I... It looks cool. These are. It's hard to make a fighting game. I think it's probably harder to make a platform fighter. Yeah, yeah. I and already. A lot of people have tried and failed. I already saw people on Twitter being like, "Yeah, they're just straight ripping Smash Brothers." You know, it's exactly the same. <laughs> I was like, "So yes, so? I, that's uh, exactly so." And you have to they're like the originator of that sort of thing like it's how it yes it's how it it's works a distinct subgenre that doesn't yeah. mean they get like the exclusivity in perpetuity yeah, i can't believe call yeah. of duty copied halo i um, need to know before we go further halo copied doom <laughs> yeah doom is amazing <laughs> i need to know who are your mains who are you oh, guys main nigel thornberry for sure oh what about I you at least i think it's got to be cora Oh yeah, because because Cora and Ren and Stimpy are are leaked because the cover came out with them on yeah. it. Yeah, um, it's either Cora uh, or like same with Cat Dog. Yeah, yeah, Cat Dog got leaked. I I think it may be Powdered Toast Man. I'm a big Ren and Stimpy fan. Ooh, that's so. pretty good. I'm yeah. They were saying people are hoping for Jimmy Neutron's dad DLC. <laughs> I think that'd be pretty good. <laughs> I, I'm, I want Rocket Power would be good. Anyone from yeah, there? That would be pretty good. Um, I someone it might have been Steve Lynn on Twitter, who is much older than us, was tweeting like old Nickelodeon stuff. So I think like yeah. adding people from back then, like random stuff like that, would be funny. Uh, I, oh, I really want to see how it plays. That's chief yeah. chief concern. Yeah. That's the um, thing. It's like there are a lot of platform fighters, some of which are good. Uh, yeah. Some of many of which aren't. Yep. Yeah. I, I think it's interesting just seeing the community react and they already pointed out two things that this game have that supposedly make it better than Smash, which is wave dashing and rollback netcode, which are one's big to Smash gaming, but I believe is not in Ultimate. And the other one is big in fighting games in general and Smash yeah. does not have. So it's kind of interesting to see the fighting game community who is pretty tough pretty tough critics kind of embracing this and saying this looks like it could actually be pretty good so I i'm probably not gonna buy it and play it just because i don't pl i don't enjoy fighting games enough to justify like full price purchase but yeah. i'm excited to get hands on with it eventually and, and maybe on sale and just have some stupid fun with it this is like if i can convince my roommate to like split it or like mm -hmm. at least to play it with me then yeah. like i'll i might get it yeah, this is the kind of game I show to Karen, and then she's like, oh, we should get it. And I'm like, you want to split it? And she goes, no, you should buy it. I was like, okay. <laughs> Which is how I end up buying all of the games we play together. 
um yeah it looks like a lot of fun uh moving on uh ian i assume you're the one who put this here cryptocurrency miners um oh i thought you're gonna talk about a different one i put a lot of this on here it, you know it was kind of funny it was a slow news week and then the last two three days yeah it just darn exploded See, folks but this is you yeah, go uh, ahead no i go just ahead with you, your you, stupid you, anecdote go ahead you put most of the news on here. I don't here even know what it's going to be, but it's going to be stupid. <laughs> you put most of the... Well, first of all, I'm laughing at Elise's rainbow puke from OBS Ninja because <laughs> it has turned you into the little, literal devil. Um, <laughs> secondly, um, I, um, you, every time I go to paste the news, you've beaten me to it by about five seconds. So screw yeah. you. Um, fine. Talk about your, your miners and how you're not allowed right. near miners. Uh, yeah, so basically cryptocurrency miners in the Ukraine have been caught with over 3,800 PlayStation 4 consoles. I believe people were saying they are PlayStation 4 Pros that they had wow. modified to mine cryptocurrency. Um, I, I listened to the Giant Bombcast recently from this week, and they brought up two interesting points, which I think is pretty interesting. Number one is that uh, they would have had to mod the PS4 Pros in order to get them to mine. Um, at least in like an efficient way. And uh, this is not definitive, but I was not aware you could crack a PS4 Pro like that to get it to start running software like that. So that's that's pretty cool. That that makes me hopeful that I've been getting into like modding of old consoles lately. And it's always good to see more recent consoles get cracked because maybe one day I'll take advantage of that legally somehow. Um, the other point is, I, I just want to bring this up. It's kind of funny that uh, this was a raid but there, there are murmurs that this is not illegal in the Ukraine, and it's just kind of the corrupt government coming in and raiding these people because they don't know how to tax them. So instead of doing that, they just come in and seize their equipment and accuse them of quote-unquote illegal activities, even though it's not illegal there. So it's Yeah, kind that's of what I was wondering. Weird. I was reading this article, and it's like, seized an illegal cryptocurrency mine, and I'm like, what's what's illegal about it? Though? Exactly, yeah. They there was something about how they... they there you go. They 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 accuse them of stealing electricity from the electrical company. Yeah. But but the thing was the electrical company was like, no, they they paid all their bills. None of this was stolen electricity. So it's just like <laughs> it's it just feels like a corrupt government coming in and being like, hey, you're too successful here. Those are ours now. You know, <laughs> give us the bitcoins. Where are they? Are they in here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. I that's absurd um yeah because the end of the article was like something about the electric bill so i thought maybe that's how they were justifying it but you bring that up and that's very funny um yeah. do you all have you all played super mario 64 yes yes i haven't beat it but i've played it yes i've i have it uh i also have the super mario all-stars version um mm -hmm. That I bought and played for about fifteen oh. minutes. Super Congratulations! Mario 64 Never touched not again. Very good. It's but not a very good game. But the I, skin it's, it's, in I, Mario Odyssey is amazing. I, I don't want to say it's not very good because I honestly didn't sit down to actually try and play it until All Stars came out. But it doesn't hold up well. It yeah. doesn't. It's very hard for a new person to jump into. 64. Yeah, it's got. It was. It was revolutionary. Yeah. Yeah. But it's old and shows it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a lot of nostalgia for it. Well, someone else has a lot more nostalgia for it. <laughs> Look at that segue. Uh, an unopened copy of the game from 1996 sold for $1.56 million. Uh, just weeks after uh, another uh, a Legend of Zelda copy sold at auction for $870,000. Um, people are mostly attributing this to inflation, people just going after it. Um, it's not, it'll settle down, but literally broke the record within two weeks of each other with these game sales. Um, yeah, this is stupid. I think this is yeah. literally just another sign of our times where there are so many things that are being overpriced due to either accidental scarcity or artificial scarcity. And this is one of those things where, you know, a little bit of COVID, a little bit of people trying to buy games during COVID, a little bit of people suddenly turning towards vintage games. All of a sudden, the market thinks things are scarce, and then people come in and buy stuff because they think it's worth more because they're looking at market prices. 
housing, lumber, Pokemon cards, graphics cards. The whole the whole place is messed up right now. Don't buy a pickup truck. They're very expensive right now. Don't buy anything. Honestly, don't buy anything right now. It's yeah. pretty bad. Yeah. So if I was rich, I would buy this and then open it in front of everyone. So good. Yeah. It's, it's like my idea. super evil plan to buy the Patriots and then dissolve them. Ugh, make so buy it and happy. like shoot it with a pistol. Yeah. Just shoot like it in its mouth. It. Put it in Mario's mouth. That's what, that's what <laughs> Nintendo did to him. <laughs> Took him out. Of bed. Put something in his mouth. Um, Ian, I don't understand any of this. So can you talk about Tencent trying to buy Crytek? <laughs> Yes, Crytek is a German company. Um, yeah. They're mostly known for their engines, but they're also the originator of the Crisis games and the Far Cry games until they were, I believe those IPs were eventually, well, not Crisis, but Far Cry was sold off to um, Ubisoft. Ubisoft. <laughs> um, anyways, Tencent, the Chinese internet company that has been buying a lot of stuff everywhere, in particular the games industry, is looking to buy them for more than 300 million euros, according to uh some european uh, newspapers but here's the thing folks this is a little complicated number one tencent like nearly every chinese company large chinese company has deep deep ties to the communist party of china like literally there are party officials who are members of the company they have certain targets that they're expected to hit in terms of members of the party that are employees of the company um and the problem is Crytek actually uh, does a side business similar to Bohemian Interactive in their Arma series where they use their engine and they develop programs and software simulation for militaries. So you basically have a company that has access to some confidential information developing uh, simulation, military simulation and training programs for the U.S. and NATO countries. And all of a sudden they're being bought by a Chinese company that has deep, deep ties with the Communist Party. And so it's just this weird, interesting thing where we've been looking at Tencent buying all these game companies recently or buying major stakes or minor stakes and mm -hmm. uh, politics is getting involved. Kind of interesting to look at it. I don't know if you guys have anything to say on that. I just wanted to, to shout out. No, that's just cool. Something to think about. Something you know, sometimes about. it's just like, hey, we got our little hobby here. Daddy likes this hobby. <laughs> but sometimes... Sometimes that hobby touches the greater world, like with Ukrainians buying 3,800 PS4 Pros so they can <laughs> crypto mine the inflated cryptocurrency market and make NFTs or whatever that shit is. Uh, anyway, it's just something to think about. Politics I, are in games. I'm thinking, thinking about, about it. I'm thinking about it. Well, except for Ubisoft games. No politics in those. That's why, <laughs> that's, why they sold them. that's why they sold them the Far Cry series. They were like, hey, we got this series that has no politics in it. Do you guys want it? <laughs> hey, we got this series about... Becoming president. What a stupid political. joke. Uh, it was a stupid joke. I'm going to skip a bunch of things we'll get back to, uh, but I kind of want to hit the big thing that happened earlier today. Yes, it did, folks. Gundam Evolution, <laughs> no, the free-to-play hero up. shooter has been announced. It looks like an Overwatch clone. It's only for Japan right now, but it's a free-to-play online first-person shooter. And, baby, they got Zaku, too. They got, they got the Zaku. It's no problem. <laughs> they got the GM. They got the GM Snake Eye. I think they even have the gun tank. It's gonna be so good, and I can't wait to VPN into Japan to play it later this year. It's gonna be amazing. Who's your main? Who's your main guys? Uh, Diaper I've never Boy. Watched Gundam. RX seventy eight two. The old grandpa. Daddy loves him. Diaper Boy. Yeah. <laughs> if he's in there, <laughs> his diapers full. Time to change him. <laughs> These. <laughs> That top of my computer gets extremely hot. His his booties are on fire. Oh, Anyways, real talk, this game looks like a mediocre clone, but it has Gundam on it, so I will 100% be playing it for a subpixel video at some point in the future. Um, Great. I'm glad you did that. No, the real news is that... I can't believe you walked, you walked right into that, Will. What were yeah. you thinking? Real I'm news, just kidding. Real folks... news, there's an IndyCar game announced <laughs> by Motorsport. So what? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, well, the there was. Is, but, Dark Tide 40K has been delayed until spring 2022. Oh, I'm so mad. I'm a, honestly, but there's oh. so much Left 4 Dead clones coming yeah, out that true. I'm okay with a little, breathe, little bit of breathing space. A little bit you of know, breathing, space. breathing space. Uh, no, the real news, I'm glad we did those quickly, though, is that Valve has announced the Steam Deck, which is literally a Nintendo Switch Pro. Um... <laughs> This thing looks I, I, cool. I need to know. Yeah, this I want to know. Cool. I want to know your reactions because I, I, 
the rumors i was like this is stupid i looked at it it looks stupid and then the more i read about it i was like oh my god this thing has a very good chipset. it's basically running all your steam you can install epic game store and all this other stuff on it and it's only four hundred dollars yeah my Crazy. my gut reaction is wait it's 400 american yeah it's 400 american and it's then it's, there are canadian ten thousand canadian bigger, yeah <laughs> there are bigger <laughs> versions there's more expensive versions but all they do is they get you more internal memory but it has an sd card slot and i, I think like a 512 gigabyte sd card is like what 75 bucks right now so yeah. you don't even need to pay for the higher versions. You just 400 and you're getting the exact same graphical performance as all the versions. Uh, it's, <clears throat> it's 500 for 64 gigabytes of eMMC, which is, think like flash storage. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or 660 Canadian dollars. I'm guessing that's like... 529. Five, 529? Okay. Yeah. For uh, 256 gigabytes NVMe SSD. So way faster, way more, but for more money yeah. yeah that um so yeah my gut reaction no, is this thing it says 399 i think you may be looking at the canadian if you're if you're from canada, I am from canada. canada. yeah yeah she is yeah. yeah so it's 399 american yeah must be 499 yeah. Canadian. 399 correct 499 price yes. and then 499 fake price northern price, North <laughs> price. <laughs> anyways um i think what's what's crazy about this Honestly, for me, the biggest thing was that I saw this and I was like, okay. And then I immediately went to the text page and the tech, it's a Zen 2 plus RDNA 2 powerhouse chip powering this, which if I'm not mistaken, the Nintendo Switch is a Zen 1 RDNA 1. Like this is literally the second gen of the chip the Switch is using. And it's only $50 more than the new Switch they just announced. Like, that's crazy. That's crazy. This yeah. is this is a lot more powerful uh one of the one of the previews i saw from ign said that they were playing star wars jedi fallen order at full graphics like full 60 no problem yeah i i, I think if i end up i think possibly in 2022 i'm gonna end up traveling a lot more um so i think this will definitely be a buy if that ends yeah. up happening otherwise I, I don't think i'm gonna dive into it like day one so, sort of thing uh, mm -hmm. But I think an eventual pickup, this thing would be super cool. Plus, then when I want to play PC games on my TV, I can just dock this thing. And then instead of running the HDMI cable from my actual PC, I can just play like uh, Jackbox and all that sort of stuff at a party. So, um, yeah. What do you think about, what do y'all think about the fucking controller layout of this? Because it's wild. It's bad. It's bad. It's, I don't know about uh, the top so, joysticks. Yeah, so for listeners, it's basically next to the screen at the top are the analog sticks left and right. And then on the outsides of the analog sticks, literally directly in horizontal line with them, is the D-pad on the left and the buttons on the right. And I there's actually a moment in like the trailer. they're like falling off. They're like yeah, they're, almost off the edge. <laughs> yeah, there, there's actually a moment in the trailer where they're like showing people playing it. And there's a woman... And she's playing it and she's using the D-pad and then she goes to the analog stick and she messes up and uses the side of the analog stick. Like she like forgets you have to hop the thumb up and over onto it. And it's just like, yeah, that's bad layout, folks. Mm -hmm. And all the, re all the reviews are just like, well, you know, I held it and it actually, it feels really good in your hands. It's kind of like the Steam controller, which I don't know if you guys use that. It's garbage. It, it feels terrible. And yeah. I just, I, I have to track that. that. But it's, I've I've heard people like sing the praises of that thing. They're idiots. I'm sorry. <laughs> it, but you're so I will say it works well. It does not feel good. It feels yeah. like it weighs uh like it weighs lighter than like it makes your hands float with how light it is. It's just <laughs> like gross. For um, for me the thing was like like this is really gonna be more of a viewer thing, but like when you're holding a controller, you're holding it like this the Steam controller just makes you want to turn your hands in like this. So like your thumb knuckles are touching each other yeah. and it doesn't, it doesn't feel right. Like it's concave and it's not good. So the other thing is this has two trackpads. So underneath the analog sticks on either side are literally a miniature trackpad for cursor moves and stuff. I, it's stupid. You know, I'm sure it works, but it, they're trying too much stuff here yeah. as opposed to yeah like I, I appreciate ps5 because they were like we're gonna do crazy stuff on this controller with the dual sense and everything 
but we're also going to realize that Xbox has the better layout. So we're going to go more towards that. I, I think this is a market that needs more people in it. Cause this, this so far yeah. is Nintendo and Nvidia with their shields that mm-hmm. aren't doing as well anymore. And then the shield is just a tablet, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. If they were doing the stream stuff for a bit. Yeah. Um, I feel like also in this market is sort of like iPhone and phone attachable controllers. Um, mm-hmm. sort of there, and but there's, there's also the whole like um the whole overseas like retro handheld where you pay a hundred bucks, you get like a four inch OLED yeah. screen, and mm-hmm. then you run a bunch of legal games on it via emulators. Mm-hmm. You know, um, oh, this will be a great emulation station. Oh, um, sure. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's that's the other thing. I know you probably weren't referencing it exactly, but it's um eventually there will be a dock available for it but you don't necessarily need the dock because through the USB-C port you can hook it up to oh. as many displays as you want the dock comes with two display outputs comes with like three USB ports an ethernet port and then um you can also do bluetooth mouse and keyboard and because it's it's running uh steam os which is just a custom linux you can literally just come home, put it in the dock, and have it as your desktop. You could wipe the whole thing. They let you wipe the whole thing and put Windows on it if you want to do that instead. Yeah. So you, it really is like a Switch PC where you can come home and dock it either through their dock or any USB-C dock and basically have a usable desktop. So it's, it's kind of cool like that. Yeah, we um, back when Steam machines were a thing, um, mm-hmm. we bought one for my brother Alexander because it was, they were cheap. They're so cheap. And good mm-hmm. and then he still uses it to this day uh and we just wiped the hard drive and installed windows instead of the steam os and then uh yeah we recently put a 980 in it didn't quite fit but it worked out um so um <clears throat> at least I'm, I'm curious will said he may eventually pick this up what about you are you is this an eventual purchase is this a first day purchase are you not looking at it at all what do you think the thing is i don't really have much use for a uh portable console like i'm Mm -hmm. in my apartment basically 24 7 uh like i doing school from home uh for the next until the end of the year at least Mm -hmm. uh which means that i don't really like need something like this like it's tempting it's tempting but yeah i think if what i would really want out of this is something that i could you know plug into the tv in the living room and then yeah. also like just have around the house. And for that it's not worth five hundred bucks. Five hundred yeah. Canadian. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I'm right there with you and kind of with Will as well, which is if I was traveling more, yeah, I would consider it. And also if I was in the market for you know, I just realized this. This is this is actually a pretty good console alternative in a way. Like mm-hmm. if you're a kid and you want a gaming PC, yes. And then you see this for four hundred dollars and you go what what if i just stop saving up for a desktop pc and just get this and use it as a desktop and handheld at the same time um but i think for me i'm not traveling enough i've got a beefy gaming pc i'm just like you elise i'm 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 work from home i'm spending time at home a lot so there's not really like literally the only thing i would use it for and honestly it's tempting enough that i'm not going to buy it but it's enough to make me think is being able to be like oh, i'm playing this game on my pc and then be like what if I played this game from bed, Mm. you know, (laughs) and being able to just pick it up and load up my steam cloud save and play it from bed. That's not enough for me to buy it, but it's definitely, it's, it's such an incredible value that I don't need it. And I'm probably not going to buy it, but I have to ask myself if I should, just because it seems so good at three 99. It's crazy. I'm I'm feeling the same. Uh, But then like I got a switch a couple months ago. Mm -hmm. I've played this handheld maybe three of the couple hundred hours yep. <laughs> that I spent with it. Yeah. So like, if that's how I play on my switch, would this be any different? Yeah. Do I really, do I really need Exactly. It? Yeah. For me, like my, I really only play the switch 99, 98% of the time when I play my switch, it's because I'm traveling mm-hmm. and I go, Oh, I have some flights. I'm not going to bring any of my game consoles with me or our gaming PC or anything. So I'll bring the switch. I'll find a game, load it up on the switch. Like that, like that's how I played golf story. I had a business trip. It was like a three day business trip. I took the switch. I put golf story on it. I had a great time playing it. I finished that like 10 hour game over three days and I was like, perfect. And 
the problem with the, the Steam Deck is, for me at least, that would be a great alternative to the Switch, but I already have the Switch. Yeah. You know, it's a great yeah. travel option, but the Switch is already kind of filling that. So I think for a lot of people, this is going to be a fantastic solution, especially people who don't have a gaming PC and they kind of want to get in on that for $399. Yeah. But I think for people who are already dedicated PC gamers and aren't traveling a lot, probably probably doesn't make sense. But anyways, it's yeah. I was not expecting it to no. be this enticing. I thought it would be stupid. I wasn't even expecting Valve to do this sort of thing, but it makes sense. Um, and I think I'm on the same fence. Um, <clears throat> it's rare that I don't have something that will keep me busy for a flight on my Switch. So, like, unless I'm playing some crazy good game that I'm got into a lot like i don't think this is a this definitely isn't a day one uh but i definitely would love to try it out for for a little bit um steam so send us one it's yeah i i would love to get this the steam link i think i got my steam link for like five dollars when they eventually went on sale at some point i would love to get this for two hundred dollars and just turn it into a hella cool emulation station like you guys were talking about yeah so i can't wait to buy this on sale and or have somebody who's like, what can I get you for your Christmas? What do you want? I'll be like, you know, you could buy me this. Get me Which a is how I get some of my stuff. <laughs> you know? So, we'll see. Um, perfect. I'm going to make an executive decision and declare the rest of the news stupid. <laughs> um, other than Phil Spencer, uh, they want, they're thinking about making a DualSense competitor. Uh, there is a cracked non-DRM version of RE Village that runs better than the uncracked version Crazy. like way some of the way way better some of the screenshots i was seeing was the drm normal version jo- drops to 30 frames per second and then uncracked the cracked non-drm version stays at like 110 like it's insane just uh, crazy yeah and then netflix uh they're thinking of Stupid. offering video games on their streaming platform i hope Stupid. they i hope they maybe make games based off that uh really good anime castlevania that'd be cool uh, if they did that okay you stole that joke i know okay. i did but the audience doesn't know that <laughs> um okay let's get to the best part of my day job which is the subpixel rating system uh folks if you don't know what this is uh get out from underneath your rock because this is the best rating system in the world it is official there is no substitute uh i'm um, going I- I need to interrupt briefly, Elise. I need to know. Mm-hmm. Have you seen Have you seen this list before? I have. Oh, I I don't mean to sound disappointed, but I just love when outsiders come in and they look at this list for the first time and just seeing. It is wild. It is wild. <laughs> yeah, your number shock... one game is a hundred percent correct, though. Outer Wilds uh, is the uh, second best game of all time. Oh boy, <laughs> I'm not saying it's bad, but. Uh, Yakuza Zero is the number one, you know. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, it's a great game, but it does not deserve that it's spot. Crazy anyways. list. <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm gonna read through the list, uh, so I don't have to read through it at the end. Um, folks, our current ranking: number one, Outer Wilds; number two, Yakuza Zero; number three, The Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild; number four, Titanfall Two; number five, Factorio. Number six, Doom 1993. Number seven, Animal Crossing Original. Number eight, Half-Life. Nine, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Ten, Red Dead Redemption. Eleven, Firewatch. Twelve, Mirror's Edge. Thirteen, Ghost of Tsushima. Fourteen, Control. Fifteen, Kerbal Space Program. Sixteen, Mass Effect 2. Seventeen, Cuphead. Eighteen, Prey 2017. Nineteen, Shadow of the Colossus. Twenty, Star Wars Battlefront 2004. Twenty-one, Mario Tennis. Twenty-two, Grand Theft Auto V. Twenty-three, Horizon Zero Dawn. Twenty-four, Battlefield 1943, 25, Middle Dash, Earth, colon, Shadow of Mordor, 26, The Outer Worlds, 27, Death Stranding, that seems wrong, 28, Gone Home, 29, Halo 4, 30, Fallout 4, we need to separate those, 31, No Man's Sky, 32, Daisy, 33, Donkey Kong 64, 34, Watch Dogs Legion, 35, Ghost Recon Wildlands, 36, Brink, 37, Kingdoms Hearts 3, 38 cyberpunk 2077 and the worst game of all time according to subpixel rating system is number 39 big rigs over the road race Ooh, um with that uh at least do you have a game well i think i foreshadowed a little bit saying out of is the second best game of all time oh no uh you've got you've got number three on here but i'm bringing kingdom hearts 2 oh no oh no <laughs> um i you just showed yes. up you just showed up 
at a biker bar <laughs> with with I don't even know. I don't know things bikers hate. Okay, so tell, yeah. us, tell, us, tell us about Kingdom Hearts two, and tell us about state your case for it, and then tell us where you think it should go on the list. Okay, uh, Kingdom Hearts two. Uh, for those who don't know, which is probably no one, uh, you play as Sora with Donald and Goofy beside you, and you wield the big key and you hit bad guys, you hit monsters and bad guys. Uh, it is my favorite game of all time. I've played this game like 15 times. I play it like at least once or twice a year. Um, mainly because the combat system is just so good. Uh, the combination of the combos, the uh, movement system through the drive forms that uh, as you level those up, you get like extra movement, including a double jump, a roll, mm -hmm. a like quick dash, which is like, a roll but further <laughs> um gliding all sorts of stuff and comboing all those together with the magic with the uh just everything makes it such a fluid and fun combat system both in one-on-one -on -one boss fights and in uh like mob fights mm -hmm. so when i play it like i almost always skip all the cutscenes that said, for for the first and maybe second time you play it, those cutscenes are fun. They're not paced perfectly. There's okay. like always a second between dialogue lines, which is wild. This has never changed in the King Wright series. I thought that was something like bad with three, but it's always no, been it's, there. It's always been there. It's like yeah. someone will say a line and then you have to wait a second for someone else to say that line. Oh. I was like, um, but <laughs> But you really fall in love with Donald and Goofy and Dude. Sora and Roxas. I mean, I don't know if you can see my cat behind me. Do you know what his name is? Oh, no. I don't know shitty video game. <laughs> his name is Roxas because I, I fucking love that character. Who's, who's Roxas? Roxas is three? Sora's nobody. Uh, he was, oh, he was kind of bit? in three. In three, you... Uh, a, Part of Sora's quest is to find a way to bring Roxas back because Roxas okay. is inside Sora. You should have named your cat 358 Days Over 2 <laughs> or whatever Sorry, it's it is. 358 Days Over 2. Oh, that's what three, it is. 358? <laughs> <laughs> it is called 358. That joke oh. is so good. <laughs> um. <laughs> I don't I don't mean to predicate this, but you're about to have your as I like to call it, your death stranding moment. Which is oh, no. <laughs> where people hurt you. Um anyways uh, <laughs> I, I, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt your reasoning and placement. <laughs> I think that was most of it. It's just it and then you get to like the final boss fights. You get to uh Zemnis and the data fights and the all that and it, you just put everything together and uh Fucking the lingering will. You put everything together in avoiding all their attacks, uh, doing the best you can there, and it just feels really, really good to do those. And then you finally beat them, and it's like, it's like beating a boss in Dark Souls. It's the the adrenaline rush. Mm -hmm. So Ian can't so play where, this. Game. Where, <laughs> where would you put this on the list? Number one, Outer <laughs> Wilds. Is the, I I say that Outer Wilds is the best game of the decade. Because the only game I, I think is better than it is Kingdom Hearts Two. I, you know, I really appreciate you putting something above Outer Wilds. Okay, here's the problem. Okay, I, I, I've never I played have not it. played. I, I have not played a Kingdom Hearts game until Kingdom Hearts Three came out, and I thought I was like, you know, I'm ready to give this series a chance. I'm gonna do some content for Subpixel at the same time. I'm gonna buy Kingdom Hearts Three. Everybody's hyped up for it, and I'm gonna play this game. It's and not I very played good. It up. I played 12 hours of it and it was real bad. And I think on top of it, it's like first time experiencing Kingdom Hearts. And it's just like, mm -hmm. there's a lot of wonkiness, you know, like you mentioned the, the badly paced cutscenes, and then just like, I guess it's goth goofy now and just like <laughs> weird stuff like that. So I think, I think for me, I, I need to be convinced that Kingdom Hearts two is somehow a completely different game enough to be that high on the list versus closer down to kingdom hearts three. And I'm not saying necessarily belongs down at number 37, but 
the idea is I, I just, I'm finding it hard to believe that you could have such a Mass Effect 2 is much better than Mass Effect 3, mm -hmm. but not to the extent of what you're presenting with Kingdom Hearts 2 or 3. So what do you, what do you say to that? Okay. So Kingdom Hearts 3 is like the 12th game in the series. And yeah. they felt the need to, for one, it's like a, it's like a 15, 20 hour game when what they really wanted to do with it was probably a 60 hour game uh, mm -hmm. with all the shit they put in there and all the stuff they were building up to. So that, it really made the story like really un underwhelming, uh, anticlimactic because you spend so much time in these shitty Disney worlds. Some of them are good, some of them are good, but then some of them are fucking frozen where you just yeah. play this, you oh. just play the fucking or <laughs> the story of frozen. Yeah. Yeah. But Sora, Donald, and Goofy are there. The other thing is they added in like all of the combat mechanics from all the different games that made those games unique. Yeah. But when you put them all together, it doesn't gel together. And you also get like really floaty combat uh, yeah. that doesn't have nearly as much weight to it. It is still like the style of Kingdom Hearts 2, but it feels like they neutered it by, by adding all this stuff to it. Because Kingdom Hearts 2, it doesn't have the shot locks. It doesn't have the, the fucking attractions, which are the worst. God, wow. they were they were like funny when you found out they were in there, and then they just became. And then they just keep happening, and they just, <laughs> and they're yeah. good. They're good, but then you so you have to do them. But you then you're like, them, it's like twenty seconds of the most yeah. boring gameplay. Um, yeah. So Kingdom Hearts Two, it's it's a much more focused experience. Um, the Disney worlds are they're shorter, and I think they're more fun. Uh, yeah, because. At least in my experience, when I skip all the cutscenes because I've played it 15 times, uh, they're more like combat gauntlets where you just mm -hmm. uh, get to experience all that. And the stories of them are, they're more focused, they're smaller, they're focused on, you know, the Heartless and Sora, Donald, and Goofy being there, uh, mm -hmm. which, which makes it a lot more, like, personal. You're not just yeah. doing the story <laughs> of, yeah. the, of the movie. Um, and then you get to the end and you have all these powers that you've built up over the course of the story. You've got uh, this combat that has a lot more weight to it. It has a lot more punch um, yeah. and a lot more like consequences. I will say um, the difficulty curve is a little wonky because if you're playing standard, proud, beginner, it's easy as piss. Yeah. You you can and then it gets worse on those. No, it it never gets worse. It gets easier as oh. you play. Uh, oh wow! You can beat those by just pressing X. Uh, yeah. But with critical mode, which is how you should play the game, the game, um, mm -hmm. it starts out really quite hard, and it never gets easy, but it gets bearable. Like it gets okay. Yeah. As you go, which means that if you start playing the game and you're like, wow, this is hard as shit because it is in the beginning mm. on critical mode. Um, and then you get, you get past that. It's, it's kind of uh, tough to get into there. Yeah. That said, the difficulty of critical mode, especially compared to King Hearts 3, King Hearts 3's critical mode is the worst. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, it's really fair. It makes you notice all your surroundings, use all your resources, use all your like options. Mm -hmm. uh, and it makes the combat like way more engaging. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's good to hear because what you're kind of describing is even playing Kingdom Hearts 3, as mm -hmm. bad as it is, there were parts of it where I could kind of glimpse at things and be like, this would be cool if it was well done. Yeah. And what you're describing is like, that's what Kingdom Hearts well 2 done. is. <laughs> yeah. 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 So... Will, you have no Kingdom Hearts experience, is that right? Uh, correct. I'm just trying to figure out. I only have experience with Kingdom Hearts 3. Yeah. I have no idea where to put this on the list. I think we put it at number one. <laughs> just to spite Outer Wilds. Listen, I fucking adore Outer Wilds. Oh, I don't. I think it's well, great. But it's not a number one. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Think it's so. a number two because but, King Hearts Two exists. Yeah, I, I would put. 
I would put Outer Wilds. I mean, probably down near like 10 or something. Like, it's still really good. I, can, can we put it? How about how about number four below Breath of the Wild above Titanfall 2? I can live with that. I can live with that. I yeah. love Titanfall 2 I, as well. I would Titanfall do that as well. Broken. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. I was going to say the way Elise talks about it is the way I feel about I actually, a lot I kinda of the games play up it here. Now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Maybe I will. Yeah. Isn't that on? That's on Game Pass right now. I believe it's on Game Pass. Might have been. I think they're all on Game Pass. Can't remember. They might have taken Kingdom them off. Hearts? Yeah, they I think I think they did oh, the no. one two remix, and then they also did three on Game Pass, or it was on it was on recently. They're on. Ah, uh, they might be on uh, the console Game Pass. Yeah, I think yeah, they I were on so. console. Okay, maybe. Um, <clears throat> Ian, uh, do you have a game? Oh no, Kingdom Hearts games left in May eighteenth. They left May thirty first. They just left. Anyways, oh, what the heck? Uh, my game is a little game called Mario Party 9. Oh. Um, folks, Mario Party 9 is the last Mario Party game for the Wii. Mario Party 10 was the first game for the uh, Wii U. And the thing about Mario Party 9 is that uh, it's for the Wii. The Wii Mario Party games are actually not bad with the Wii mode. Um, there's a lot of interesting stuff there. However, this is the first Mario Party game to introduce the cart mechanic, where instead of you being on a board, playing it like a board game, and you're each player's controlling their individual, they're moving around, you're all stuck in the same cart, so you're all moving around the board together. It's kind of like if you're playing Monopoly, but you don't get to individually roll, you're all just stuck on the same space and you all move together. It would be awful. And that's the problem with Mario Party 9, is that this game took something that was great and... You know, I'll give them a little bit of credit because they tried something new, and then I'm going to take away all of that credit and more because they did something awful with that. And, you know, I, I think it's got to go. I think it's got to go. I think it's 34. 34. Above Donkey Kong 64, below Daisy. And here's my reasoning Daisy, we've talked about it before fantastic premise they just never really iterated enough on it and delivered and built a game around it it just felt like perpetual early access but still a great premise donkey kong 64 just kind of a weird mess of a 3d adventuring game and i feel like mario party 9 deserves at least some credit for having great wiimote mario party games like so the i would shake, put it at shake the paint can one yeah or the turn up pulling where you're like this <laughs> really yeah. turn yeah uh, I w I will agree with you. I've never played it, but I, I feel like feel like compromise. I have played nine. I have played ten, like once or twice. Yeah. When it was new. And so, I believe it has like the same cart years. mode as well, yes. where you're all kind of yes. in a cart, and it's not. I don't hate that so much. I think it's great when you're playing with people who are stupid, who are not <laughs> good at games, or who take it too seriously and want to like spend ten minutes on their turn. Or who are children. Yeah. But that should be an optional mode. You know, how like like Mario Kart 8 Deluxe or 8 as well also has like, hey, you can turn on like auto steering and auto throttle for when you want to give the controller to your three-year-old nephew. You know, it's great for that. But it's optional and you turn it on as opposed to it being default. You know? My yeah. experience with it was that like it's it's worse than normal Mario Kart. Or Mario mm -hmm. Party. Like it's it's not as good. Yeah, but you still get like your turns happening and things happening on your turn. You get a bit of strategy from like where do you want to end up so the next person doesn't get a good turn. Yeah, and like having things happen all together, so that you can have like those, the the mini games like doing interesting things with that. I think isn't bad. I agree. Yeah, like there are good parts about it. It's not all bad. Yeah. Still. Yeah worse than before yeah um great i um i didn't think of a game but i'm also gonna forfeit it because we're running a little bit long and i know you're not gonna enact the rule to move a game on no because i it's honestly a i'm tired and b it's really hot in my apartment and i want to start the air conditioner before i go to bed um <laughs> and it needs to spool up so i just want to end this episode but I will uh I won't add a game, but we did add new number what was it? 
four. New number four, four Kingdom Hearts 2, and new number 34, Mario Party 9. Check back next week for my hot editions, uh, which will be amazing. Uh, let me spin up the music here, and we can end this freaking podcast. Folks, for watching. You're beautiful, all of you. Except for you. You know who you are. Um, if you enjoy this podcast, you can go to subpixelfilms.com and go... That does things. It brings you straight to our YouTube channel where you can subscribe and look at things. Uh, you can also go to our Twitter, Subpixel Team. That's on Twitter. I don't know why my brain isn't working anymore right now. Uh, you can follow Ian on Twitter, at Think Gibson. You can find me, Will Crosby. I never say my name. On Twitter, at Hunt270. You can find Elise on Twitter, I don't know what your Twitter is. I think it's at Elise underscore appears. Perfect. Uh, you can find her there. You can also find her on the saved data around the monitor, which I believe is bi-weekly now. Or that's twice a month, right? That's what bi-weekly yeah. means. Some people mean it other things. Um, also, uh, um, what was the other thing I was going to say? I don't really care. Folks, thanks for tuning in. This was this was a fun time. Saturday, Roblox. Uh, Saturday, right? we've got Roblox. Next Tuesday, we've got The Bests. Uh, and then uh, next Thursday, another local chat. It'll be fun. Um, I had a blast. I'm not even going to wait for the music to fade out. So thank you for tuning in, in everybody. And we will see you next week. Bye. Bye.